So I released a free template that has Lucia Auth and a bunch of other authentication things in it. And recently I got some feedback from some of my Discord channels saying that some of the things I'm doing in my use cases, I should probably wrap in transactions. So for example, I have this change password use case. And when you invoke this from the front end, it first deletes a token from the database and then it updates the user's password. But the issue with this approach is that both of these functions end up calling a separate database query, right? So this is a query number one and then query number two. And if for whatever reason, the second one fails, the update password one, that means the token has been deleted and it can no longer be used again for whatever reason in case the backend threw an error. So using a transaction is probably the way that you should solve this. If you want stuff to work as an atomic set of instructions, and if any of those sets fail, just go ahead and roll back everything. But this video isn't really about transactions, although I'm gonna show you how I refactored this to use transactions. This is a video about dependency injection. I wanna talk a little bit about dependency injection. What is it and why is it useful sometimes? So let's look at this first function, delete password reset token. It's a really, really simple function. All it does is it calls DB. It deletes a token from a table called reset tokens where the token is equal to the token passed in, okay? Now, if you scroll to the top, you'll see I'm pulling in a database object from basically a, a singleton, you know, a module that's already been cached when node loads this in. So we have an issue though, because to run a transaction, you can say db.transaction, and then you'll get like this transaction object here, which you can then call things in your code base like this. Okay, so this is how you do it in Drizzle, where you can run multiple things inside of this callback function, and those will run as an atomic set of instructions. But the issue is I'm calling two different methods, right? I'm calling this method and then I'm calling this method. So I'd have to go in here and figure out how to basically run this whole thing in a transaction as well. So how would I do that if I have two separate functions that are in different places in my module system to basically operate on the same transaction object? Okay, so this is where dependency injection comes in clutch because what we can do is we can just say trx is equal to db. And then we can actually just do this. So now this function is gonna operate on an optional argument that could or could not be passed in. And then over here, what we could do is also in the update password, we could do the same thing. Let's just go ahead and say this can take in a transaction object and we're gonna use it right there. And then over here, we can say await create transaction. And the difference is that we can just pass in that transaction object at the very end of both of these functions. So what we did is we said, you know what, we're gonna actually create the transaction in the business layer of our code base, which makes sense because this is a business need, right? The business decides, well, if one of these fails, we should probably roll them both back, right? That's a business um, requirement, I guess you could say. And so I think it makes sense to have the transaction be declared inside of the use case, but just make sure you abstract it away so you still don't really know that you're using Drizzle. And luckily this TRX object seems to share the same interface with this DB object that we're importing up here. So as simple as that, we basically just inject the dependency. It's an optional argument in which we fall back to the original database object and then we just use it. So now when I run this code, both of these have to work or else it'll roll them both back. And so now you learned a little bit about transactions, hopefully by watching this video, and also a little bit about how you could potentially do dependency injection to give your functions more options of how they're gonna run specific pieces of code and kind of inject modules as needed under the hood. All right, that's about it. Have a good day and happy coding.